In their most hostile encounter yet, Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis attacked each other early and often in Wednesday's Republican primary debate rather than focus on Donald Trump, the absent front-runner, as both tried to demonstrate they were the strongest alternative to the former president. DeSantis and Haley called each other liars and insulted each other's records and character in the opening minutes of the debate. They seemed to relish the chance to go head-to-head -head without their lower polling. Rivals interrupting, as in past debates, the two Republicans instead drilled into each other's policy ideas and directed viewers to dueling fact-checking websites their campaign set up. The one-on-one -on -one format displayed their sharp differences over issues ranging from foreign policy to abortion less than a week before the Republican primary process begins in Iowa. Anytime the going gets tough, anytime people come down, she caves. When you need someone standing and fight for you, don't look for Nikki Haley. You won't be able to find her if you had a search warrant. Thank you, Governor. Governor Haley. Leadership's about getting things done. How did you blow through $150 million in your campaign and you were down in the polls? So here, here's you are I not think a manager. No, I, now I'm going to say. I think say, it's very instructive no, about what Nick, how Nikki this, Haley sees the world. I, I think I have the floor. If he can't handle the financial parts of a campaign, how's he going to handle the economy when it comes to the White House? Under her administration, you would have seniors getting a less cost of living adjustments while your tax dollars are going to pay the pensions of Ukrainian bureaucrats. That's not true. You talk about That's putting Americans lie, last. Man. That is wrong. You've supported all that money going over there. So let's put You're our so own desperate. people first. We You're have to put so Governor, Governor Haley let And she speak. also said, we can play this song and dance. She has a record. She makes statements. And I think part of the problem with her, her candidacy is now that she's getting scrutiny, uh, she's got this problem with ballistic podiatry, uh, shooting herself in the foot every other day, saying things that now she doesn't even take questions from people. You're invisible in New Hampshire. You're invisible in South Carolina. You're in fifth place. You've only you've got $150 million and you've gone down in the polls in Iowa. Why should we think you can manage or do anything in this country? Because Thank you. Governor DeSantis. But those, that election, Trump lost it. Biden won that election. And the idea that he's gone and carried this out forever to the point that he's going to continue to say these things to scare the American people are wrong. I think what happened on January 6th was a terrible day, and I think President Trump will have to answer for it. But I think there's a larger issue Republicans have got to think of. It. Donald Trump's going to lose that appeal. He's going to end up going to trial in front of a stacked left-wing D.C. jury of all Democrats. I don't think he gets through that. And so what are we going to do as Republicans in terms of who we nominate for president? That's what we need in our country. We don't need this chaos anymore. We need someone who's going to be a new generational leader that brings sanity back to America. Thank you so much.